Okay, so this is our exam number one review. Um, we're going to start here with some word problems. And first one on tap is the mixture problem. And so what's on, what you're seeing here, let me minimize this. Okay, what you're seeing here is just an example <laughs> and some advice. You know, here's some steps. Okay. For most word problems, guys, I noticed for most of the types of word problems you'll have on the exam, and most of the ones I usually focus on, you do have an easier time if you learn to make a table. So um, I think for this exam, I'm probably going to probably lean on mixture problems, age problems, and just the basic translation problems. Um, what else would there be? Uh, I'm trying to think of the other types that, that I liked. I'll probably leave the money problems off of this exam just for, for now. That might come up on the final. I'm not sure yet. But um, we'll probably do things that are similar to the mixture and the age-related table, things you can make a table for and, and have a better time. Okay. Hopefully that helps a lot with everybody's studies. So, um Anyway, okay, and then we have an example that the attendees of our thing, our live webinar people, have been working on. So we're going to go here to this example and check it out. What are they saying up here? If you ever wanted to sell something at a profit, make a solution, or work out interest, this lot will come in handy. If not, well, you've got to learn it anyway. I love the humor for this book. This is something that is from the CGP book, your, your textbook that we have uh, that you have the PDF for. Okay, let's have a look see. An alloy containing 15% silver is mixed with a 65% silver alloy that is, fifth, excuse me, is mixed with a 65% silver alloy to get a thousand kilograms of an alloy that is 50% silver. Okay, so here's what we want, okay, and what they have in the table is this. Let me kind of make that a little bit bigger. And then I'll probably just make it so we only have to see this. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so the table. Any questions about building your table? Anybody? No. Good. No. Cool. Good. So let's fill in what we have. So we have the 15% amount of the silver. The kilograms is we don't know yet. Okay. So we'll let that one be X. The percent of silver for this one is the 15% or 0.15. Since they have 15% written here, I'm going to write 0.15 here. 65% silver alloy is um, the other Once. amount, right? What are we going to put there? 1,000 minus X. Good job. Y'all remember, good. 1,000 minus X, right? Because what we're trying to end up with is 1,000, right? And this could be the double line, by the way. This is that double line we were talking about yesterday. And we'll have point zero, 0.65 here. Sorry, my handwriting gets kind of kindergartenish with this, with writing online like this. But, um, okay. And so the uh, amount of silver kilograms. So total, what are we going to have there? So what two things are we adding together? So we're adding... 0.15 times x, right? This will be added to the 0.65 times 1,000 minus x, okay? And then equals this final thing, okay? And by the way, the final alloy is 50%, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, excuse me. So we do want to put the 0.5 times the 1,000. Okay, it's kind of messy. All right, any questions so far? No. Okay, cool. Good. All right. And so let's get our calculators. All right, so this is 1,000, 1, 2, 3. So this should be 500, right, equals to 500 on the right side. That's the mi final mix. And here I'm going to go ahead and fill in for my equation 0.15x right rate times amount plus the next rate times the amount. That's not enough room, but okay. Let me go ahead and fix that. That's easy. 
0.65 times 1,000 minus x equal to 500. Excuse me. Okay. So now we're just going to we'll, we'll excuse me distribute and combine like terms and solve for x. Basically, is what we're doing now. Okay. Okay, so one, two, three, six fifty. I should have a plus sign there. Sorry. I'm sorry, I'm all rushed. It's sad. I, uh, I'm like so wanting this not to uh, get backed up on us, the uh, computer program. We had technical difficulties yesterday, so I think it'll be fine today. Okay, so you guys let me know if I make a mistake. That's going to actually help you to be on top of that. Not just because you're helping me, but you're helping everybody, really. So if ever in this whole semester, anytime you guys are in my class, even if you find a mistake that I make in, you know, an error, typographical error, whatever, do not hesitate to let me know. OK, so okay. I've got my calculator on and I'm trying to punch this in. What do you guys have for this? The X term becomes what? Combine these two. Negative you know. uh, half times X. Good job. And then plus 650. I'm going to do these one at a time for now. <clears throat> the more equations we solve today, I'm going to go ahead and do more mental math. I'm subtracting 650 from both sides. Remember, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. If you're having trouble remembering exactly what the properties of equality are called, I, I wouldn't worry about that so much as how to use it. You know, I'd worry about doing it correctly. Minus 150. Thank you. Yes, I was like trying to get my my, count, my phone to stay on. Excuse me. Okay, so divide by negative 0. 0.5. X is equal to 300. Yeah, that's yes, good it job. is. Good job. So And so it's negative that we're dividing. These cancel, by the way. Good job. So it's positive 300. All right, so that is the amount of the 15% alloy, okay? So uh, the amounts, remember, go back and answer them even quickly. So the 15% alloy, you can even do this. I mean, just, just put this. You can put 300 kilograms. This is a good quick answer. 65% alloy. 700 kilograms. Right, 1,000 minus that, right? 700 kilograms. Okay, to get the final mix of a thousand kilograms of the 50%. Okay, good enough then. All right, so everybody got that? How are we doing Ms. that? Let me check the question. Miss Karen, I have trouble making the equation actually. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You did? You had trouble or you're having trouble? I had trouble, yeah. Getting the equation was the most difficult part, yeah. Did the table help you at all? I like, I, I don't mind their up, their table is set up a little differently than mine. Yesterday, yeah. if this was yesterday, something I did, yesterday, yesterday was, di yesterday was different, right? It was it the same. It was the same, but I had what they have here in their columns. I had oh. it written across the top. So, oh, okay. Okay. Which is fine yeah. either way. Okay, now I like the oh, way okay. I do it. I'm going to tell you why. I like this one better. I'm going to set mine uh, up. This is how I would have done it had they not had a, had a yeah, table done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can put your rates, mm. and then you can put your amounts. Yeah. Okay, and then, you know, yeah. you're writing your equation. You could actually mm. come just below the table the way I write it, and you know with the double line, you know where your equal sign is going to be for one thing. Okay. So all this stuff on the left side of that, this side, mm. these are the things you're mixing, right? Rate times yeah, amount. Yeah. Yeah. Rate times amount, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then the final rate. Oh, okay. You know, totals, whatever you want to call it. Oh, okay. I like the way I did that because, you know, it, it kind of lines up with the equation you're about to build. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you, if you want to, go ahead and build this table instead. And it would oh, okay. look, it would look just the, basically the same except the columns are rows. Oh, okay. You know the amounts would be what? Let's see. Here we go. We'd have x, and you'd have one thousand okay. minus x. Oh, okay. Okay. Y'all good? And point yeah. five. 
yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it's either way. It doesn't matter if you get on the test and you accidentally start making it that way. Either, okay. Way you practice it one. Just remember, it's going to be rate times amount plus rate times amount equal to some final rate times amount. <laughs> you know, it's just, okay, it's going to be a percent of something. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. Right. No problem. Anytime. That's a good question. It's a good thing. And you guys, if y'all don't know exactly what to ask me, tell me, just like Prasanna just did, let me know what, where you had the trouble, because I probably can guess what the question basically would be from, uh, just from previous experience, you know. Okay, I have an age-related word problem that has been on tap since yesterday. So let me, yeah. let's get it going on with that, okay? And let me go and steal it from my, um, my, I emailed it to myself even. Or you put it in the thing already, didn't you? I'm just going to copy it there. dun da 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 Questions tab. Okay. See Jaya. Remember our friend Jaya is 10 years younger than Sid. Let me catch it, capture this. Okay, come on. I probably could have uh, got, grabbed it out of my email quicker. Who knows? My snipping tool. Come on, snipping tool. Can y'all see the questions tab when it comes up? I'm curious to know if y'all can see that. Yes. Y'all can see that? Okay. Um, I'll probably just handwrite it. Oh, no, I got it now. Okay. It finally came. Okay, so let me get that down. And next example is here. Hooray! Okay, Brody, you've been wonderfully patient. Thank you. But here you go. <laughs> you got it now. You ready for this? Okay, so yeah. Jaya is 10 years younger than Sid. Okay, if you increase both of their ages by 20%, the difference between their ages is 18 less than Jaya's current age. How old is Sid? Okay, so again, let's go ahead and just make a table. Might as well. Um, and let's see. I'll just. Okay. It. I don't know. That's a hurry up table. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna stretch that out, and we're gonna put uh, Jaya first. Now, who is older, Jaya? Sid. Jaya's youngest, right? So remember this. We want to. That's the one we're gonna leave as the variable in our equation. Does that make sense, y'all? Usually, the smaller number, when you have to figure out more than one number, the smaller of the numbers will be the variable or the one that just remains, you know, the, you don't have to, everything else will be in terms of that variable. Now, what variable are you guys wanting to use? Y'all want to use um, Y for years or, or what? Sure. Okay, so Jaya will let her age be Y, okay? Okay. So let's put this. We're gonna have John, this first column will be their age now. We gotta stretch these out a little bit. We're gonna need some room on this one. Okay. So um, right above that column, I'm gonna write age now or at present, okay. whatever you want to put. Okay. In the next column, okay. Instead of the age, instead of actually stating. 10 years from now or whatever, or 10 years ago, this is what happens. They're saying if we increase their ages by 20%, which is, you know, 20% of their age from now is future. So, but we, we'll keep it simple. I'm going to say this next column is going to be their age plus 20% of their age. Okay? Okay. 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 So, but let's get the age now down, okay? So age now for Jaya is just Y. Now Sid, it's saying Jaya is 10 years younger than Sid. So how can I represent Sid's age? I would y, have, y, go ahead. Y minus 10? Ex excellent. Well, actually, he would be, let's see, y plus 10, 10 years right? younger. So Y plus 10. So Jaya is a smaller number. We would take okay. hers and add 10 to get to him. Right. OK. OK. So really think about it. OK. Like think about you and your kid. Like if it, this helps and it helped me a lot, like really put yourself in a reality situation that you deal with. 
if you have kids, this makes it a little easier. You know. Okay. Okay, so anyway, these are my representations for their age now. Now we're going to say if we increase their ages by 20%. So let's say 20% of their age is what? So we'll have the age now. This is the Y and the Y plus 10. Okay, and I'm going to change my color slightly to show you the plus 20%. Okay, and so the plus 20%. Is going to be in sort of this dark red so plus what 0.2 right y 20 percent of y of her age oh, okay okay and 20 percent of sid's current age will be plus and we'll simplify this in a sec okay but this will be 0.2 of his age now with me oh, yeah okay, okay. So now, <clears throat> you know, this is just adding, increasing their ages by 20%. Okay. Then, okay, this has, since this happened, we can build our equation. The difference between their ages in, at this point is 18 less than Jaya's current age. Okay. Is, in this, this sentence here, is is the equal sign. Okay. Oh. Let's go ahead and simplify this first. I, I think that would be prudent. Why don't we do that? So let's go ahead and simplify. This would be actually 1y plus 0.2y. Or what? 1.2y. Okay, so we're simplifying in this column. Okay, and then over here, let's go ahead and do this. We'll have to distribute the 0.2. I'm going to go ahead and work downward for this one. y plus 10 plus 0.2y plus 2 and combine like terms and we'll have what 1 right these two combine 1.2y plus 12 excellent good job so we'll put that up here okay so this is just scratch work FYI y'all know that I'm just kind of separating it out so now this these this last column is what we can plug in and be nicer that way so the difference between their ages now be careful we want to be careful to subtract the smaller one from the bigger one right who's older still Sid's older right yeah. right so we want to make sure we subtract Jaya's age from his so one so the, that's the difference by the way the difference in their ages 1.2 y plus 12 and minus 1.2 y is equal to is 18 less than Jaya's current age. Jaya's current age is just y. So how do I represent 18 less than y? Y minus 18. Plus 18. Good. Making sure. Making sure. Good job. So now let's just combine like terms, right? We The grouping symbols are out of there. And let me go ahead and do this. Go ahead and, and do that for me. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to erase the scratch work so it's not confused with the official equation. There we go. So this is our equation. And that came from, I'm gonna, I want to underline the part that that came from, the difference between their ages at 20%, right? So this is if you increase by 20%. This is where the equation came from by the way that's why I'm, why I'm underlining that okay so what happens here in that first step when I go to you know cancel or combine like terms the y terms who can tell negative 1.2 y cancel out yes it does and that's okay if it happens y'all and sometimes it's almost hard to write something because you're it's weird if something cancels all the way out I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about in the next example but it's okay for something to totally cancel out because it's a special kind of equation so let's go ahead and get y by itself we'll add the 18 to both sides 30 good so y is 30 so right now y is 30 Jaya is 30 years old and that makes Sid 40 40 Yay, he must have had his over-the-hill party, right? I'm kidding. Okay, 
My joker is off today. I'm sorry. It must be broken. So, okay, you guys. So, um, these are the ages. Make sure you're going back and answering the question, right? Even if it's just like what I just did. Go back and at least go fill in those blanks at least, okay? Okay. All right. All right. So, um, we did it, Brody. We got your example up. How do you like it? Yeah, thanks. Good. Is that yeah, helping you? It makes sense now. Just, it's always just so hard setting up the equation. You're just like. Yeah, hey, yeah. Does this help having these tables? I mean, like on this one, I use this table loosely. I mean, like with the last two columns anyway. You know, yeah. this is kind of a loose structured table here, you know. But just stay with age problems. Stay with the beginning. What's at present? Present first, yeah. take a sentence, okay. actually phrase okay. by phrase. Yeah. And take the next sentence to another column. Understanding the question is the most difficult part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. But if you can yeah. use the tables, like in the mixture problem, we were talking about how it lines up. The way yeah. I, do it, I like to make it line up. Yeah. Your problems anyway. This really helps. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Good. Sorry, just before I did, can I just ask? This is the one where you find the the, the least common multiple. Yes. Is it? Yes. Okay. That's right. You got it. Okay. And what do you do with it? Um. Well, you find it, and then you multiply. We're gonna distribute it into both sides of the equation, right? Every term will get multiplied. Yeah. It should cancel the denominators out. It should eliminate your fractions. I'll show you what we're doing with it in a sec. I just wanted to see what y'all were, um, so I can like talk and <laughs> I'm trying to talk to y'all and uh, look over to the side and write copy this problem down. Okay, here's two of the problems I'm talking about. Okay, all right, and I'm gonna give us some room here. All righty. Um, so what is what we want to do generally is we want to find the LCM of the denominator. So step one. We need the LCM of the denominators. Yeah. Okay, so out of 2 and 8, what's the least common multiple of 2 and 8? It's eight. nice when one of the actual, one of the numbers is the LCM. In this case, it is. 8? So, yeah, so we'll use 8, okay, for this one. So my LCM is 8. It's going to get multiplied on to the left and right. What I do to the left, I have to do to the right right to keep the balance of the equation it's that equal sign you got to worry about that so okay all right so what we'll do and what you could do too instead of running the step I just wrote I had to write that now because it's the first example we do but you might want to do this step if you had to choose you know to do less steps you're gonna write this multiplied by each of the terms right you're gonna distribute the eight because they're mm -hmm. terms, right? Yeah. Go ahead and write that write, write that out, that distribution. I'd prefer you doing that. And notice I'm writing that LCM a little higher, right, because it's a numerator. It's a little trick of the eye just to help keep your brain organized. And that sounds like kind of silly, but it's true. So 2 goes into itself once, into 8, 4 times. So now 4 12X. times that. Right, so we have the 12x. <coughs> Both of these guys cancel. Six, six. Yeah, minus 6x. And watch your signs. Be real careful on that part. Okay, so yeah. it's negative 24. It's real easy to lose track of those signs. Okay, so now we've, we've kind of distributed. Let's combine like terms. Minus 4. Good. Excellent. That's correct. Yeah, that's what I got. So x is four, negative 4. Um, how can I check this, by the way? I'm wanting to go over this at least with one of this more simple problems because what students need to realize, and this is not just for y'all, it's for everybody who's going to watch this later, you guys have a key, quote unquote, you have a key in that you can check your answer. All you do when you solve an equation to check to see, and there may be a problem on the test that says show that negative 4 is a solution to this equation. Okay, that's the type of problem that could come up. So if we want to check that x is negative 4 is the solution, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of write down our equation here. We're just going to come back and plug in, in place of x, a negative 4. And we're looking for a true or a false statement. Okay? 
So write the original equation though, you know, make sure you write the way it's written from the top, from the beginning. Okay, so we'll go in and use parentheses because it's a negative number. You always want to be real careful. When you're plugging in a negative value, you want to use parentheses. What you got? Negative 6. Then we have what? Positive 24 divided by 8 plus 3. Plus 3 is minus 3. Yeah, it's true. So it checks out. So it's true. And that means that x equals to negative 4 is a solution. So I'm going to take the 20 and I'm going to put 3x plus 4 over 4. Now note that I'm writing the 20 a little higher, right? If I had to put it over 1, I could do that. You want to be careful with this because what we still have would be a distribution that is left, okay? And you could do the distribution, but at first while you're practicing these, I'd go ahead and write this out. You know, don't do the, don't distribute 5 yet is what I'm getting at. Okay. If you want to go for it, you can. It's up to you, but just my suggestion until you practice a few of them, I guess, you know, increase your difficulty level slowly. So look, I'm just going ahead and doing the problem here. What is this called that I'm doing here? It's called distribute, right? Distribute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm going to distribute my four. All right. So far, so good. 15x plus 8x is what? 15? 23. 23. 23. Yeah. And then my constant term, I'm trying to use the term, the, the word constant term. You're going to hear that. That just means a term that does not have a variable, right? If it's not a variable. Okay. Minus 8. Good. Okay, minus 8 is equal to 7x. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I subtracted 23x on both sides. Good. That's right. Okay. Cancels on the left, mm -hmm. pops up on the right, and we combine it. Next. Awesome. So we have a positive one half, or you could put 0.5. That's fine. Yeah. You know, generally for like the number one half, I'm not going to worry about it too much. But in general, see the problem is given to you with fractions in it. You could leave it in a reduced fraction form. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Unless it is something that's dealing with quantities or is dealing with uh, a topic that generally or usually is, is in decimal form or something, then you would put it, you know, definitely you'd give the answer in decimal form. But um, okay. other than that, just kind of leave it in the, put it into the form or leave it in the form that the problem is given to you in. Okay. You know, unless it's, uh, it states otherwise. I'm going to let you guys check that one for future reference, okay? So we're solving this one for x, right? What happens here? It gets canceled. Right. So let's yeah. say we're going to try to get x, all the x's to one side. Pretend you don't see that, right? So mm. we try to add 2x from to both sides. In the process of doing that, your x's all cancel out, and you end up with just a statement of 25 is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Look that don't be afraid to write zero if everything cancels out. It's not your eyes are not playing with you and you did do the right property. But okay. This is a false statement. Oh. Okay. When you have okay. something like that, okay, and let me get rid of the, that. Okay. I, I instead of writing not equal to in this case, I'm gonna say this is false. Okay. Like that like there is no solution to it? Exactly. There are no okay. solutions in this case. Yeah, we got a few problems like this in the homework. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're gonna, what you're gonna do here is everything will cancel out again and you're gonna mm. end up with a true statement. Oh, okay. Okay. If you get a true statement, every, your X's cancel and you just mm -hmm. end up with something that is true. Zero is equal to zero, right? This mm -hmm. would be that the solutions, x would be all real numbers. x could be an element, could be any of the real numbers, okay? Yeah. Okay. So you have... Um, Thank you, Miss Karen. You're welcome. I'm glad you asked. Automatically go there because that is always... <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So let's I take just... a look at just some quick inequalities. Yeah. Okay. And the reason I said I'm going to go straight into absolute value... 
I mean, mm -hmm. I guess I'll do a couple of other examples too. I have to do that, but to set it up. What I, the big point of this is this. The only difference between this and solving an equation as opposed to inequality and equality mm -hmm. is that deal when you're multiplying or dividing both sides, right, balance the scale, both sides mm -hmm. of the equation, if they get multiplied or divided by a negative value, that's when your mm -hmm. signs swap direction. Okay? Mm. And so I'm going to go through that in a second right now. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let me get my um, get the section There it is. Got it. All right. So um, there we go. All right. So here's an example. Okay. And okay. I, when I run into that, that what I just spoke about. I'm going to point it out and I'll write it out for y'all, okay? So the okay. example, the directions would read solve, and uh, we're going to give the solution set um, in graphic, we'll graph it, mm. graph and the interval notation. Yeah. I'm going to go, okay? Just because we might as well for practice, okay? Okay. Okay, so A. And I'm going to just write like maybe four or five examples out for us, okay? And so you begin yeah. solving them while I'm writing them out. Five less than or equal to 3a minus 4. Okay, and then see my next one. I did so badly on this quiz, my grade totally went down. <laughs> Look, remember this too, and I'm, I'm kind of glad we're mentioning that. If anyone ever scores a 2 or below, or... Mm -hmm. If you make like an error, like a just if something weird happens during your quiz, mm -hmm. you do a three or below or something, you know, mm -hmm. y'all get in touch with me right away. I will reset it for you. Okay. Oh, okay. So if anybody's got like a one or a two hanging out in your scores of your quiz, you need to let me know. Okay. Okay. And I'll see it and try to. I'll, chances are, if I've put grades in Jedi, I probably did reset it. And when I see them, oh. I'll reset ones and twos at least a couple days and give a couple days from when I see it. Mm. But, um, if, if whether I reset it or not, get in touch mm. with me so that you can have a chance to do it. Okay. So sometimes I reset it and I don't have a chance to like get in touch with y'all or, you know, just some okay. weirdness. So, okay. So y'all solve that one. I'm going into these. Let me get this page back here. Okay. Come on page. All right. Got it. All right, so um, you solve these just as though you had had an equal sign, okay? It's really similar. This one's going to be 3, 4 minus 3x greater than negative 24. Okay? Just basically okay. use those things, those steps. I'm going to do two at a time. I'm not going to write more than two at a time because this is where we're going to run into the um, the 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 catch, I call it, the, the one exception of the rule. Okay, so we're going to try to isolate the, the variable term, okay? And don't worry mm -hmm. about left or right right away, okay? We do want to read it. In the end, we want it to be variable on the left, constant on the right. But for now, we'll just keep it to the where we're isolating the variable. So let's okay. add 4 to both sides. So we'll have 9 less than or equal to 3a. Again, yeah, you're going to divide by 3, and it's positive, so no problem, right? Just keep going yeah, yeah, yeah. just like normal. Bring it down, right? Everything, the sign stays the same. Yeah. So what we're going to do here is, in the next step, we're going to go ahead and write it so that A is on the left. Yeah. So do this, make sure the alligator who wanted to eat A before is still wanting to eat A. Okay? Oh, so the bigger number is the alligator mouth, right? Alligators trying to eat the bigger number. Okay. So to do this in graphical form, okay, this solution. Let me see. I'm gonna bring, get this a little bit smaller. Yeah. So it can A can be like four, five, or six. 
No, A can be, watch, I'm going to show you. Okay, this real, the number line I just drew, check it out. Uh, uh, see the okay. line I just put on here? I can't see it, ma'am. I don't know, I can't see it. Oh, there might be delay. Let me see. Yeah, okay, yeah, I got it, yeah. Okay, oh. it's just a delay. All right, okay. so what this represents, this line here, okay, and I'm going to say this can be any real number. So, look, I'm going to put three in the middle, okay, just to have it. I'm going to put two, three, four. Oh. Five. Okay, what you can do, guys, is you don't have to center your, your number line at zero. Put whatever, oh. you know, Make sure, just make sure you can see your endpoints, okay? What this, what A is greater than or equal to three is saying, okay? I'm a shade where A, the number, the solution set is bigger than three. That's to the right. Y'all agree with that? Okay. Okay? Yeah. And then here's the deal. It's or yeah. equal to. Because it has or equal to, I'm going to use a bracket. Okay? Mm -hmm. You could also use a closed dot. Okay? A closed mm -hmm. dot includes it as well. Okay? Bracket or a closed dot includes that number. Okay? And so okay. this is the graphical, this is the graph solution set. This means any real number, including like five points, three four two you see mm -hmm. not just it's not just three four five six seven etc like that it can oh. be any tiny number in between that's any real number greater than okay. or equal to three okay okay all right now to do this the reason i like to use the brackets and parentheses on my graph is because when i go to do my interval notation it's just that simple so brackets again will include this you're just putting your endpoint. It starts at the three and goes up mm -hmm. to infinity. Infinity okay. always have parentheses, by the way. Okay. Oh. All right. That's it. Okay. All right. So let's do B. Okay. And then I'll have, I'm going to do a couple of absolute value inequalities and I'm going to have to get going myself. So, okay, let's distribute the three. So we'll have what? 12. Minus 9x. Yes. Greater than negative 24. Okay, so let's start isolating our x, right? Let's go ahead and get the 12 over to the right. Subtract 12 from both sides. Again, this is very similar to the equations, right? If you have an equal sign, you're still doing the same thing. Minus 36. Excellent. Okay, now greater than, right? Now, what we're about to do in this next step Okay, here's, you can see that we're going to have to divide by a negative 9. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. I'm rewriting the, the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we divide by a negative mm -hmm. 9, okay, because it's because negative positive. on both sides. Yeah, you flip the sign. See, this guy changes because, oh. because we multiplied or divided by a negative value. Oh, I missed that step. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's the only difference, too. That's it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. By a negative value. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's when your sign swaps, right? Oh, okay. Swap signs. The direction, I should say. The direction of the inequality. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, that's a really messy way to write it, but I'm trying to hurry. Okay. Let me put a couple of other problems up here. Um, actually, I want to do one, at least one compound inequality. That's the ones where it's three sides. They kind of so can you draw the number line? Oh, can that's right. I'm so sorry. One? I forgot to do it. We didn't even finish it. Here we go. Let's do that. Sorry, Prasanti. Thank you. Okay. So um, negative nines cancel, and we'll have X is less than positive four, four right? Yeah. All right the number line for this one notice what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna stick four in the middle put a three and a five just to kind of give me some you know direction for and it really is for everyone else you could just put the four I'm fine with that okay right, so where are the x's less than four to the left right yeah yeah good so we're gonna shade you know you just kind of darken the, the number line in, in that direction oh, okay oh I'm sorry. It thinks I'm trying to scratch it out. That's what's happening there. Okay. 
So let me just do this. Okay, so that's going to go there. Okay, mm -hmm. and so it's excluded. The 4 is not included, though. It's really only the X is smaller than 4, not 4. Oh. Everything's oh, okay. smaller. So 3.999999, right? And then not mm -hmm. the 4, okay? Oh, Notice okay. I'm using a parenthesis instead of a bracket. Oh, okay. Excludes, right? Mm-hmm. So parentheses exclude the end, end points, right? Okay. And the bracket, the squared off brackets, these will include. That's when you have the or equal to. Okay. Okay. Oops. Look how swapped my, my letters. That's pretty terrible. All right. Uh, this is good. Right. I had to so parenthesis back, is um, if you have less than, greater than, brackets is less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay? Okay. This is just me writing notes right here. Okay? All right. So, um, all right. Next problem. Here we go. All right. And this is going to be, this is called a compound inequality. Let me get that. So what is the interval notation for this, ma'am? Oh, oh, you're right. Okay. And it's very similar. Now, we want to go left to right, right? Read it from left to right. Read your number line from left to right. Where is it coming from? The shaded part is coming from negative, negative infinity. Oh. Oh, okay. To up to four, but it stops, just does not include the four, right? Okay. That's what that says. That says negative real numbers through four, but excluding the four, up to four. Oh, okay. okay. So it helps to do, even oh. if it wouldn't ask for the graph, it helps to do the graph the way I do it. It helps mm -hmm. to have the graph to look at to do the interval notation. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So this would be example C. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's have negative five. Oh boy. Okay. Less than or equal to. Yeah, I got to get going to you guys. Seven minus three x. I tell you what. Um. Can we let this one be our last one? We have to. I'm gonna get some. Um. Now, well, let's see. I can do one absolute value one for y'all. I'm going to have to just do one after this. Okay, for this one, we try when you have a compound inequality like this. Notice this. We have what? We have one, two, three sides as opposed to two sides of a regular one, right? When you have so far equations and inequalities have had two sides. Now we have three. So what okay. I do to one, I got to do to all three. For example, oh. I'm about to multiply 5 by all of the sides, right? Because I need to get the fraction out of there, right? Clear in my mm -hmm. fraction. So I'm going to take a 5. I'm going to multiply it all the way on the left. I'm going to multiply it in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then all the way on the right. Right? Okay. So you can see the original equation is in there, right? The original equation all in there, okay? All right, so let's cancel what needs to be canceled and multiply what needs to be multiplied. Negative 25. These fives will cancel out. That's the point of it. We're trying to isolate X by itself in the middle, always on the. Mm -hmm. Okay, you always want X in the middle on the compound inequalities. Now I'm going to subtract seven. Subtract seven. Okay, and what do we have here? We have what? negative 32 okay 35 minus 7 28 and so divide by negative 3 now what's happening here with this one let me come up Nine here changes. carrots turn around yes and you can do that like in this well I'm just going to write it like it is I'm not going to worry about swapping my numbers out divide by negative 3 this becomes greater than or equal to Okay, and this becomes greater than or equal to and we what, 28 over the negative 3. Okay, and now you definitely just want to simplify this, right? We're going to have the x all by itself in the middle. I would worry about, you know, changing the direction of it to read it after you're done simplifying. You know, get all the 
simplifying and stuff out of the way. So uh, 32 thirds, can I reduce that at all? That's done, right? That's that's reduced, I should say. Yeah. You can put it in decimal form if you want to for this one, because you're going to have to put it on a number line, and that helps to put it into a decimal form. And negative 28 thirds. So if we did do that, we'd have 32 divided by 3. That would be 10 point. 10 point. What am I doing there? Okay. 10.67. I'm around it to two decimal places. I'm doing this because I'm about to graph it. So, and then the 28 divided by 3, 9.3. Nine. Yeah, it's negative actually 9.33. Okay, I want to read this thing left to right or what smaller to larger when it comes to these. We want to have, mm -hmm. in other words, we always want our uh, inequality symbols to look like this for compound inequalities when you're done. You know, okay. it's all said and done. So you have to swap those guys out. Okay. Uh, all right. So we'll have the negative 9.33 and the 10.67. You want to make sure it makes sense, right? Smallest to largest, left to right. Okay. All right. On the graph. Let's go to the graph for this one. When you go graph these guys, you only need to put the endpoints. Put 9.33 and put 10.67. That's all I need to see as far as labeling. Okay. And then X is between them, right? If you read them one bit at a time here, read X is bigger than negative 9.33, right? So you shade above it, right? Mm -hmm. And then X is, but it's also smaller than 10.67. So when you have it, Compound inequality that's all together like this, readable mm -hmm. from left to right, it's just shading the center. And and these endpoints are included, so I'm going to use bracket. Okay. Now, my interval notation looks very similar. You use a bracket to include my lower endpoint. It goes from negative 9.33 through 10.67 bracket, inclusive. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. The disjunctions, I'm going to leave the disjunctions off of here. The ones where these are separated out, I'm going to, this is the types I'm going to put for these, okay? Okay. All right. Um, only type of disjunction you would witness would be the absolute value equations, which actually, you guys, I did a great video of that, and I'm going to post that next. I will put that in the chapter, in the lecture five stuff, okay? I'm going to okay. put that under the webcast part of that, all right? Like, I'm going to okay. do that this afternoon. It's going to be there by this, by this within a couple of hours. It's going to be there, okay? But okay. I, I have to get going, like, like, I'm about to be very late for an important date. Like, I have to pick up my son. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Are y'all good? Okay. If Thank so you so much, Ms. Karen. That's what we oh, had left. Thank you so much. All the best, guys, everyone. All the best. Thank right, you, all, you guys. No, thank you guys. I, you're very, very welcome. Very welcome. What I'm gonna tell you this too. I'll be in my office later too. When I get back and I'm settled in, I'll, I'll put a message in in the the forum, the general forum, telling you guys when I'm in my virtual office this evening. If you need help, then come get some one-on-one -on -one help. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Take care. Oh, Bye. Really quickly too. The exam will open in the morning. It's gonna close at 11:55 tomorrow night. It's not timed like it's not like you only have two hours. You know what I mean? You can morning walk down the door if your computer lets you. You just have to be careful that at eleven fifty five when it's due, make sure you're done because it will automatically submit itself at that okay. time. So morning, what time does it open, ma'am? What's that? What what time does the exam open in the morning? Oh, it, uh, usually at midnight. It should, barring any kind of difficulty on the on the system, you know. Okay. If that okay. happens, it'll be within. It'll be in the wee morning hours. It'll be there. Okay. It'll be there. So okay, you guys. If you have any other questions, let me know. Text Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. Have a good day. Bye. Right, Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.